have our favorite TriMet cronies coming up next on TriMet board meeting. Who's a, who's our favorite TriMet crony? It's Harry Saporta, the man who was recruited all the way from South America to save the day. And, uh, you know, the man that never sees anything unsafe. Uh, I don't think he's ever, has he ever said once that he's seen anything that was unsafe? I don't believe he ever has said that. So let's hear what spiel he's got for us today. A note, um, uh, introduce Harry Supporter to do your monthly safety update. So, Harry, I might also note as Harry comes up, uh, we've also provided to you um, the annual report that's required under the statute, uh, uh, finances and administrative activities of the agency. Um, it's a it's a relatively thick document, but I think it's actually a nice recap of the things that the agency accomplished in the last year. So just to note that you should have that uh, meeting one of the requirements of the statute to have that to you within 30 days of the end of the fiscal year. Um, with that, Gary? Sure. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I won't go through the report itself, but. Um, after you've had an opportunity to review it, I'd be pleased to answer any questions that you might have. Um, the safety update is really, uh, I want to bring a perspective of where we're moving and um, what we're moving toward. And uh, obviously, this is not the last conversation we're going to have. Uh, I'll be before you on a monthly basis to provide various updates. Um, there are three principal goals that uh, I'm uh, that we're working toward, and that first one is using really a risk-based approach as to how we uh, look at safety. And um, the reason for that is that it allows us to evaluate the most significant hazards, and we're looking at that in terms of both the probability of the hazard event and what would be the severity. And we're looking at that at throughout the whole. Um, all of our activities and operations. That also then allows us to allocate the appropriate resources to control these. So we're looking uh, at a four-pronged approach to this. One, identify what the hazards are, what are the significance of them, assessing it in terms of probability and severity, and then implementing control measures, then obviously monitoring the control measures to ensure that they um, uh, remain effective or do we need to modify them? The second goal is really advancing that the culture of safety. How much do you want to bet that scheduling is not part of his safety assessment when the fact is that scheduling is probably the most critical variable in the operation, in the safe operation of a transit bus when a driver is not rushed and harried? But I'll bet you they don't even, I don't, I bet you it's not even in his little analysis. TriMet, and if you recall, last year we under, we uh, engaged Washington State University to conduct a safety climate study on our behalf. And there were some significant findings, but one that, that is, um, that really stands out is that we really need to do a much better job in soliciting feedback from our employees and then secondly, communicating safety risk to our employees as well. And so we're working. Yeah, okay, that's, that's reasonable. You need to do a much better job. Because when I worked there and had a safety problem, it was always rejected as being not a safety problem. I know that's continuing to this day. And the people that were doing the rejecting, they never drove the route. They had no idea what I was, did they even come out here to have me explain it? No. That's when I stop filling out their cards because they didn't take them seriously anyway. Working towards doing that and we're doing that through encouraging employee participation and feedback uh, primarily through safety committees but we have other mechanisms and that's to promote the safety risk assessment process or um, I'm sorry uh, safety assessment process better known as the RSA process and that's a mechanism that, that allows us to receive direct feedback from our employees as to what are the safety concerns. And then um, supporting the recommendations made by our various safety committees. So we're, we're working towards that. See, he's, he's window dressing. There's no substance to what he just said. He said they're, 
they're having these committees. I've heard nothing but bad things about these committees, by the way, uh, from people that have been on them. And they're trying to get feedback. Well, what I hear is they're not, the operators are not happy with that as it stands now. Um, I alluded to the third goal is that of safety uh, risk communication. And uh, this is where we are uh, enhancing our safety efforts through training and also finding better ways to communicate with our workforce as to what specifically are those safety risks and how they can help us minimize those risks to the agency and to our customers. Um, related to that as well is that to, uh, to contractors that work on our system. Um, they are making uh, various improvements. Um, PMLR is one of those major projects where there is safety risk not only to um, our, the employees that are working on the project but also to the public. So um, we're emphasizing contractor safety as well and then obviously we have a very large outreach to um, our customers and you saw an example of that during our last board meeting where we had a flyer and uh, that was published in all of the community newspapers uh, emphasizing the importance of, of uh, safety around our rail lines. So if you look at your packet and this I'm on uh, uh, I guess it would be slide number five. Uh, there's a diagram of something known as a safety management system. Um, this is the approach that we're taking at TriMet to enhance our safety efforts. Um, what you may not know is that the Federal Transit Administration is also adopting this particular approach just as other US DOT modes of transportation have as well. And most recently, I learned that um, the Federal OSHA is also moving towards a SMS uh, approach. So this is the approach that TriMet is adopting. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, you'll see that there's this four-pronged approach, but I wanted to emphasize these three primary areas. One is the risk management, and I spoke of that as one of our safety goals where we're looking at safety hazards, analyzing them, assessing them, and providing mitigation strategies. Uh, secondly is a safety assurance process which uh, where we begin to collect safety data, analyze it. We're also conducting a series of safety audits and um, reviews to ensure that the, our processes remain effective and, um, and unfortunately we will have incidents on occasion and uh, we'll investigate those to find the causal factors and are there measures that we can implement to mitigate them and then uh, obviously establishing a set of performance metrics. And these metrics are, are uh, not just looking at what has our incident history been but rather also looking at uh, measuring performance and being proactive in advancing safety through the organization. Um, and lastly, safety promotion through safety training and risk communication. And the benefit of all of this is that then this whole process becomes how we do business at TriMet. It, safety then becomes integrated into all aspects of operations with the, with the aim of continuous improvement which ultimately leads to a culture of safety. So one of the major efforts in this area, if you go to the next slide, is that... Um, you know, in all fairness to support up, I really wouldn't know the first thing about how, how you get from the executive level down to the front lines and actually communicate effectively. You gotta remember all these people that are doing all this safety stuff don't know anything about driving a bus or driving a train. Now Lomax did drive a bus, but it was 30 years ago, and that's that was another world back then, driving transit from what it is today. There's no experience similar. You can't relate her experience driving a bus 30 years ago to now. And I remember the only thing that ever happened while I was there, and don't forget I've been retired a year and a half, was that one state, that one class where they wanted you to turn your head over and over and over and over before you made a turn and you know, I thought that was laughable, of course. You know, here I was, 13, 14 years of complete 
perfect record and they're telling me I have to go like this and I know a lot of drivers that had 20 years, 25 years of safe driving, they're all of a sudden going to this class and being told they're doing it wrong and it's, that's just completely ridiculous um, and I had no respect for it at all and of course I didn't implement any of the recommendations because I saw them as ridiculous. So I don't really know what they would do to uh, change the culture of safety. Um, I do know that I never agreed with the idea that TriMet was unsafe. I never bought it for a minute. I thought it was hype. You had one driver who majorly screwed up in 40 years. That was Sandy Day that's brought on this cataclysmic, ridiculous hysteria that happened after that. So, I mean, it's not like there was a whole slew of fatal accidents showing there was some kind of a pattern here. That was a, that was a, uh, a complete anomaly to the normal operation. So, I don't know. I mean, it, it's similar to the 9-11 on a federal level where they went crazy after that and, and built up this whole giant bureaucracy and this police state that came after. That's similar to what's happening here in the sense that all of a sudden the entire operation is deemed unsafe. And it never was true. And it's not true today, I'm sure. It's, it was never true. But yet TriMet uses this as some kind of a, a pawn or something to make the executives look like they're doing something productive. And uh, that's already been launched. And uh, we're, uh, last year we, we conducted approximately four audits, I believe it is, or six audits. So in future briefings, um, We'll, I'll provide you with an update of this safety management system. Um, I have the honor of sitting on the national committee that is uh, promoting this concept through all uh, transit agencies. Um, I'll be also... Oh, so Mr. Safety has the honor of sitting on some committee. You know what that means. That means taxpayer-funded travel and lodging all around the country. That's what that means. And it's not any productive use to try that, really. It's, it's one of those committees that will make a report about something. It's not working for TriMet attending that stuff. But yeah, he'll get paid TriMet's salary and TriMet will pay his his, uh, his flight and his, and his uh, expenses while he's there. Venting a set of performance measures for you. Um, we've made a number of improvements on the east side in terms of great crossing pedestrian safety. Um, that'll be more of a show and tell. I'll have pictures that time uh, for you to see. Uh, we've made some significant work in that area. Um, we received a grant from the Federal Transit Administration to demonstrate something known as the pedestrian warning system. Um, we are testing four different systems and uh, I'll provide an overview of that. That project is actually going to launch in September. Um, making improvements in safety training and then obviously our safety outreach and education. So I'd be happy to answer. All right, I happen to have in my hand here, can you see it? The TriMet safety update. That's what he was talking about. Now look at this, all right? Safety goal number one, risk baits approach. Identify safety hazards. Well, how the hell, you've been there more than a couple of months Harry, don't you have an idea what they are by now? I mean, you should understand what the safety hazards are, but apparently you don't. So well, what have you been doing for the last two years? Uh, number two, assess risks. Well, that's the same as identifying the safety hazards. Implement measures to control risk. Well, once again, what have you been doing? Monitor control measure effectiveness. <laughs> It's a bunch of bureaucratic stuff there, and I, once again, what have you been doing for the last two years? All right, here we go. Safety goal number two, advance a culture of safety. Implement climate study recommendations. Employee participation and feedback. Promote safety assessment process support. Employee safety committee recommendations. Well, where where is all that stuff? I know that, you know, they got all... It's not public. None of this shit is public. Okay, you have to go through the cumbersome, delaying public records request to get this stuff. So, once again, it's a bunch of bureaucratic bullshit. Let's look at safety goal number three. Communicate safety risks. Yeah, like scheduling. Employee, risk awareness and safety training. Mm-hmm. Contractor, risk awareness and safety training. Customer, 
Public safety awareness in education. All sounds very nice. Very, very official. Now here, look at this. Safety management system. See, policy on top, risk management on one end, safety service on the other, and safety promotion. Isn't that a lovely, isn't that a lovely little graph? It's a lovely, lovely little graph that doesn't say anything. Let's look down below. Safety management system. Uh, decision making becomes part of TriMet business and operations. Lovely. Risk management, safety, risk analysis, assessment, risk mitigation. See, it keeps saying that it says the same thing over and over and over. Promote continuous, leads to a culture of safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Sorry. Wait, get this right here. Okay. Safety data collection. Where is the data? Where is it? You've been there long enough. Safety audits and reviews. Where's the Where's the information, Harry? Incident investigations, which you can't get, and which every time I was post them on the internet, they would go bananas and move them around to keep me from seeing those. Um, where every uh, incident performance metrics. Some of that's on the da on their dashboard. Some of it. They don't, they don't give you any of the information about that stuff. Safety promotion, risk communication, safety training. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a repeat over and over. Look at this. You can't, this is their safety and security environmental services department reorganization. Look at all these people here. You need a magnifying glass to read this, by the way. It's so small. And below that is, in summary... What have we done so far? Recertification training for operators. That was a joke when I was there. Recertification training for supervisors. Well, I don't know what they're doing there. They don't tell anybody. Implementation of RSA was a good thing, but once again, that's also secret. Nobody gets to see it. Um, some of the things they, they act on, other things they don't. Enhanced safety committees. I haven't heard anything good about that. Conducted safety study. Where is it, Harry? Public awareness campaigns. Yeah, they've done that. They've had different ads in different places. Reorganize. Reorganize. What, what, what is that supposed to mean? Revise safety audit process. What does that mean? I mean, there's no definition to any of this. It's just words on a piece of paper. And here's what he's going to do in the future. Status of safety management system. <laughs> safety performance. I mean, see how these words don't really say anything? Grade crossing and pedestrian safety improvement. Okay, where's that? Bus pedestrian warning. No, they're going to do that stupid buses turning thing, which I think is a ridiculous joke. Safety training. Yeah, yeah. Safety outreach. So what do you have here, really? You have a bunch of bureaucratic baloney is what you have. 